Lucky Puffins. Anyway. Oh. Right. I just saw that we hadn't uh, had started to okay. recording. So um, the caravan was literally on this cliff. This was a hundred yards away from where the caravan is. And I was, I rather, I love sunsets. And so I, I was really surprised that on the east coast of Yorkshire, I could see a sunset, but indeed there was one. And then mm. actually at four in the morning, I needed to get up for a, reasons you will understand. And um, there was the sunset, the, the sunrise. And I thought, hang on a minute, I'm in Yorkshire. How can I see the sunrise and the sunset from the same place? So this is the sunset photo. So what I've done, oh, hang on. Yeah, there we go. Is I then went on to your photographer's ephemeris. Right. I've no idea if this is the homework or not, but this is what I've done. Yes, it is, it is. And so I put my little dot on, I did ask for Bempton, which takes you there. And then I moved the dot to exactly where I was on the cliffs. Right. This is I've not zoomed in. So to give you an idea of where we are, because this is the Yorkshire coast. This is Flamborough Head, Bridlington. And we're just here. And that is the sunset. Line at 936. Yeah. And this is why I could see the sunrise from the same place, which was in fact, I needed a little girly moment at four o'clock in the morning. And I got up and there was the most magnificent sunrise. I did take a photo, but I can't find it on my files anyway. Um, and I thought, how on earth can you see sunrise and sunset from Yorkshire? And obviously this is why. And I put the little cursor, I moved the cursor on the bottom to be the actual time of when I took it. And because you're in the way, I can't see what time it was. So there we are. It was 8.41 p.m. was the time I took that sunset picture. Mm. And so that line is 8.41 because I was trying to work out whether... Can you see, this is the local Bempton Cliffs and just there is a distant horizon, uh, is another cliff sticking out. So I was using the ephemeris to try and think, was that distant one, this headland, or was I actually looking at Filey? And I'm not awfully sure, to be honest. I did this, this is the exact spot where I was standing and the exact time. So, because I was just intrigued to see whether actually what I was looking at in the very distance was that far away or this. But anyway, I found it rather fun to play with. So um, then I've, because I've had several trips away. So then I went on July the 8th. Um, so I changed the time top left to this. I did it retrospectively when well, I did it the day after. Um, and so this is Hollyhead, Anglesey. What month and you were at the other one? The say again? What month were you at the Bempton Cliffs? Um, June the 16th. Right, so you're quite close to the uh, longest day and all that. Yeah, it was a very good sunset. Yes. Anyway, so here we are. So this is a close up of the same. So this is Hollyhead and I'm standing there, which is actually now in close up here because this is South Stack Lighthouse. It's one of the right. standout places. Lots of people take photos and it's a really nice place for sunsets. Obviously, you're looking over at the Irish Sea and I and I had I go there a lot and you can walk down a little path and when it's open, you can cross over to the lighthouse or you can stand back on the road and there's various places you can go down. This is a little tower. And I was thinking, where can I see the sunset from? Um, and uh, that's the photo. So I looked at where the sunset would be and then went there. So this is, I'm actually standing where I put the pin. And this is um, 40 minutes after sunset. So, you know, the, su the, the sunsets get better and better, don't they? Yes. Um, once it's already what gone time down. Do you want to see Emily? 845, 9.50, 9.30 or 9.45? 9.30. 9.30. Are you going to be ready to go out? Yeah, whenever you are. All right. <laughs> okay, all right, lovely. Um, so this was about 10 o'clock at night, I think. Yeah, 10 p.m. And obviously I, I wait, thankfully, South Stack Lighthouse is a regular, it goes round and round very regularly. So you don't have to, it's not very difficult to stand there and click the button at the right time to get the light right. on the lighthouse. But anyway, I, I found the ephemeris really helpful to know whether that night I wanted to stand, this is the path going down or actually go round, round the headland and stand here rather than there. So I found it really useful. Um, so, um, and then I went to Skoma in Pembrokeshire. So yeah. this is west coast of Wales. This is Skoma Island where you go to see puffins. Yep. 
absolutely fabulous. I will bore you with some photos of puffins on Monday. Um, <laughs> right. And But you need to take a boat from here to there and, and it doesn't run all the time. Anyway, so I stood here and this is six o'clock. So this is a couple of weeks ago. Right. And there's a couple of little islands. And I thought, I want to see if I can get sunset over this island. And I didn't know where, where the sun would be at six o'clock. So this is six o'clock down here. Sunset's at 9.25. So sunset would have been way off. And there's nothing, there's nothing back there. It's the Irish Sea. Yep. Um, and that's the photo that I took. So the sun was directly over the island and to where I was standing. Um, just to get the light, because this is a notorious place for sea kayakers, which is I am as well. And this creates a whirlpool and it can be quite tricky waters along here at the right time of tide. I also did my tidal planning for this and, and this wasn't quite the right time to get this all twirled up and everything. But I was I was wanting to see if I could get the whirlpool effect with the sun on it. So I used the ephemeris for that. Um, and I'm going back again. Um, two weeks time, August the 19th. So I've done some planning for then. Obviously the sun, it's, it's moving. It's not going so far north. Um, and I've decided that when I want to do my sunset picture, instead of standing here, I'm gonna move around and, and go and stand on one of these headlands right. and see if I can get a golden sunset. And this is where I've put my line here, which is 926, which is an hour after sunset on august the 19th so next when i go in two weeks time i'm going to having got this i'm actually there for four nights so i probably will stand there one night but i'm also going to plan to see if i can get somewhere here to take a sunset picture with all of these islands in the foreground so there we go so that's what i did with the ephemeris well, um, fantastic i have to say absolutely yeah. banded. very well done elaine that's absolutely brilliant yeah God, thank you but I, as, as I said to you last night, Peter, I've thoroughly enjoyed playing with this. Um, <laughs> but it helps to know, because I, I, I like to have a picture in mind and then try and find where to put myself to try and get it. It also helps to know how late at night I'm going to have to stay up before I go back into my tent. <laughs> early in the morning. Yeah. Oh, I don't do sunrises. I'm really not good at that. <laughs> <laughs> say tent. Yeah. Anyway, if we've got time, I can show you the pictures that we did for the previous groups that um, I wasn't able to meet. I've got some of my typology and my dandelions, but we can come back to that. Yeah, well, we do that now. Well, well, do it well. now. OK. All right. Um, so this is going way back to May. I sent them to Peter, but um, we got a bit wires crossed, so he didn't show them on my behalf. But the, the project was to take pictures of dandelions in several different ways. Yes. Um, I'm only going to show you four. So these are all taken in camera. There's no Photoshop on any of these. Um, so this is in my garden, which is even more overgrown now. <laughs> I've rather taken Don't Mow March to, um, to heart. Um, okay. And then this is taken looking straight down on one. Yep. Uh, I've, I've, I, actually, I have. I've cropped this a bit and I've changed the clarity a touch. Um, and then this is looking up. So it's not exactly a silhouette because I wanted this to appear. Right behind the center. So it was a more dreamy sort of effect. Obviously a, a very narrow, um, sorry, a, a, I think it was F4, you know, wide aperture to try and get that depth of field. Yep. And then I brought it inside and um, lit it with a black backdrop um, and did that one. You're getting very good at this, aren't you? What was the background for the first one, I mean, Sorry, for the, for, for the no. For that one. Oh, no, the next one, that's the grass. Yeah, the next one. Uh, that's the grass. I was just standing higher. There's another one with a, a white background or a light background. There, yeah, the sky. Oh, okay. okay. It was just, it was a cloudy day. So I <laughs> thought, great. <laughs> cloudy day, brilliant. Um, so you hold it up or you on your, your hands and knees? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, wait. <laughs> Actually, I think what I did was I, I tucked it into... Um, I've got a I've got a, a slatted table yeah. and I just tucked it in between one of the slats and then I got down on my back and was shooting up at it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and, and then we had the, the typology project and um, I did two types. Um, I happened, this was when I was in Bridlington, uh, you know, doing that one with the sunset thing. Um, 
And Bridlington High Street is quite, quite interesting. In the space of 150 yards, it has a lot of little, it's a narrow thing. And, and so these are windows along Bridlington High Street. And the ones at the top, there's an old castle or gatehouse or something or other. Anyway, so it, it goes chronologically in order, I reckon. Um, so it starts off in 1200 something or other, and then the mansion house, and then there's a church. And then these are windows going along the high street from lookalike, you know, fake <laughs> gothics yeah. to modern sash windows. And it was quite interesting to do because, of course, the perspective was hard. The best, the best windows were on the first floor. Yeah. So actually, I had to stand on the other side of the street, hold my camera up as high as I could with the, the viewfinder down to try and get them all as horizontal as obviously the, the, this one top right. I'm I'm looking up at it. So I I don't have Photoshop where you can do that thing to you know change angles to square things up. So these haven't been photoshopped apart from cropping, but it was a fun game. I, I enjoyed the game. Thank you, Peter. I, I, I really enjoyed doing this because I suddenly thought, oh, I could do windows. Um, <laughs> anyway, and then we were having a project on flowers that month. So for our project, we were taking pictures of flowers. And so I put this together from my rose pictures. So, and I, they're not all the same, but I got to, I tried to get the size of the flower the same. Obviously they're different colors and I've tried to put them in some sort of pleasing order. So I did yeah. the but the full ones and then I did one with the buds. There you go. Oh, so that's my homework. <clears throat> but I, I, I must admit, Peter, I have so enjoyed doing these practical things because okay. I've really enjoyed the ideas that you've given us. So I'll stop sharing now. Okay, well, go back just a minute. The window, oh. Windows one you have. Okay, all right, hang on. You might know, know about this program I mentioned called Photo P. You want me to go back to the window one? Yeah, why not? Yeah. You remember Photo P? No. Yes, you do. We talked about it last week, I think. Did, yeah. Oh, yes, we did. Photo P. Uh, my error is I'm not writing notes. Well, Photo P is like Photoshop, but, you know, just free, just there, and it will have uh, the ability to to um, broaden, uh, to straighten those windows up. Oh. It's worth looking at. Right. I've written myself a note now, so I'll be able to see it again. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Well, well, thank you for that. Oh, um, hang on. I'm trying to stop share, but it's moving around. There we go. Anyway, thank you for your patience. <laughs> well, you did a brilliant job there. Absolutely brilliant. Hello, Alan. Good morning, all. An exciting trip to the tip this morning after having <laughs> packed up the car yesterday and driven all the way to the tip, only to find out that it was Thursday and it was closed. Our stand is just arriving. Ready. Morning, Stan. Not ready yet. How long did you have to wait at the tip? Not long. You have to make an appointment. Five Alan. minutes or so. No, the appointments are finished now. Yeah, oh, I know. Okay. Morning, Stan. And it's got a lot busier Morning, since Peter. the appointments are finished. That's what I guessed. That's why I asked you how long you had to wait. Yeah. Just not, let's put a note in the, or here. Yes, <laughs> yeah, so I wasn't going to go all the way to Amesbury yesterday. I mean, found the tip was shut. <laughs> I'll leave it in the car overnight. Right. We're, so put you in the picture, Stan. We're looking at um, uh, homework from last time namely the photograph photography ephemeris the photographic ephemeris i don't know which it is um and uh, elaine has just shown us some brilliant brilliant absolutely well marvelous pictures that you, she took as a result of using the ephemeris um, I'm, I'm very very pleased to see her somebody's disappeared who's that that's oh, it, it says elaine's crossed her microphone off yes i see fair enough <laughs> Only... That's because I've got a bit of a cough and it's not very pleasant for you to hear. <laughs> a screen on here now, than the words. I'm sure somebody's disappeared. Who I think it's Charles has gone. Oh, yes, that's right. Charles, yeah, he's vanished. I'm sure he'll try to get back in again if you can let him in. Uh, well, I'm not stopping him. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, but anyway, just to let you know, it's Charles. 
he, he has to um, he has to come. Right. Um, now, did somebody else say they had some homework that they did with it? No, they didn't, did they? Not even Alan. No, Stan. Stan. Don't look. You spoke, Peter. Yes. Did you do any of the homework? Don't be silly. <laughs> <laughs> what silly about that? I don't. I don't do the homework. So you know it all already, of course. Yes. I don't need. No, no. <laughs> all right. Let's move on. Um, uh, I'm man after my own heart. <laughs> Somewhere I've got some results from. Um, uh, and I can find the right part. Sent, received. Oh, it's got to go to. Yeah, got to find Terry's pictures. He's got them here. Here we are. I found it there. So Terry sent me quite a lot of work on the TPE. If I go right, try and find a, the beginning of it. God, he did go on a bit. Um, so this was the first. Uh, well, I'll share it with you. That's the only way. It's the only way. Right. So this is uh, Terry's first emailed to me on the 14th of July and um, uh, he, talk, he says I've looked at a location for the 6th of August which is today isn't it um, and he says this is this is this is before our meeting but shows old serum and the sun shining straight up the bridge over the ditch uh, and into old serum proper and then later in the day he says there's another shot of the Spitfire near rug near the rugby club. Now I didn't even know there was a Spitfire hanging around in Salisbury until I read this email. So if we click on this, you should be able to get um, the image that he sent. Can you still see anything? Hello, what's happened to it now? Perhaps it doesn't work like that. Oh, I've got to, I've got to run it, haven't I? Yes. In actual fact, the Spitfire is pointing the wrong way, in my opinion, because all you can see is the it's flying straight into a tree. I've never had it see anything so daft in my life. <laughs> Have I got to sign up and everything? I'll have to sign in. I'll have to sign in. I don't think that link's going to work because you've got to sign in as whoever it was. Well, that's just well, there you are. It has worked, you yeah, see. It has worked. Oh, did you see that? Yes, so, indeed. Uh, if we use the um the bridge you're talking about is this little white thing, I think. If I can zoom in, I think we can zoom in. Uh, yes. So our old serum is this Iron Age hill fort. And um, so he was saying the sun was shining straight up there, I think, or down there, which is sunset or sunrise, I don't remember. Um, oh, yes. This is before, before the meeting. So that was at 8.44, I suppose. So it's 9.11, but I might be wrong. It's no, it's 9.11. It's because the the paler line that's going top right is the sunrise. So let me start oh, you're moving it now. Okay, yes. you've changed from where he had it oh, left. It's the sunrise. I haven't changed anything except clicking on these. The well, gold... no, but when you do that, you've removed his line that he had. Oh, well, I'll, okay. Because he had he had a line that was going straight the way down the bridge. Let me put it back in again. Oh dear, what is it? Oh, let's relocate. <laughs> that's stupid, isn't it? Um, how can I do that? Um, Try logging in again, doing oh, entering yeah. the email that you did before. Right. Um, Start so planning now. That's it. A little bit of sign in. Uh, if I click stay signed in, does that will make any difference? Who knows? Right. Sorry if I messed it up. So don't touch anything, but you can see the the line that's going bottom this, right. Yeah. That is nine eleven, which is where he left it. And that's and that is aligned with that bridge when you zoomed in. So, so if you, if you touch, can you see? Yes. So that one there going down bottom right is the nine eleven line, and then, he's aligned it directly down that bridge. Yeah, isn't that clever of him? Yes. Okay. Right. That's that one. Then there was a second one, which I'll have to do the same again, won't I? <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Tedious this. Um, right, this was the this is what he called the Spitfire one. 
and that's by the as a thing called Hudson's Field in Salisbury, which is just beneath. The rugby the club, actually, Peter. Sorry. It's the rugby club. Yes, I know, I know. I'm just pointing out Hudson's Field to Elaine because she doesn't know. Oh, see, sorry, I do apologise. Quite all right. And just here is the rugby club. <laughs> well, actually, that bit there, I think. And this is the, where the Spitfire is on a big stick. <coughs> standing. At, it's not a full-size Spitfire, is it? Uh, uh, it is, yeah. It is a full yes, size. it is a full-size one. I thought it was a third scale. Why I is think that it was a full-size, and it was actually in the Boscombe Down collection for until it was put up where it is now. Oh, I thought there was a specially made one third scale. It was specially made because it's made out of um, cardboard and things. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> anyway, so um, what did you say about that? You said um, and later in the day we get the shot of the Spitfire. Yes. Anyway, um, <coughs> yes, this is about her, her, where he's gone today. I should not be in attendance, yes. And he did some more as well. So that was um, one lot he did. I'll go back to um, the emails. That was one on the, no, I've got too many, too many little screens. Around. That was the 14th of July, wasn't it? So that was there. And then the same day he sent more. <laughs> um, I lost internet on Friday and could get back. Blah, 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 blah. Um, he went on about this quite a lot. Um, would it be more ideal, perhaps as an addition, to find a location, use a photo ephemeris to find the best time and place to set up a camera to photograph the location at, say, sunset or at moonrise over the location and then take a photograph? I suppose so. A lot more difficult. So you are looking to go further with this next time, query, query. Yeah, I see. Right. Kind of, uh, kind of what I did with it. You did, yes. I have been considering this over the winter just past and was going to shoot the moon over Salisbury Cathedral. My location for setting up the camera was going to be somewhere near the location of the museum and use photo ephemeris to get the best time and date. I did have the times and dates, but on most of them, the cloud cover was too much. Ah, right. Oh, I did, however, use it when going to take shots of steam trains to ensure where the sun will be. Additionally, I use weather forecast to see the wind direction and also time of the map of the line to get the loco. Well, he's got some more on that. Um, if I just now move to the next. You see, the interesting bit about that is I just went out and photographed the train from where I'd normally photograph it. I didn't need it for anything to tell me where the sun was because wherever <laughs> it is, you're stuck with it. I've gone the wrong way uh, on his email. Right. Uh, yes. This is the steam train one he did. Um, yeah, well, we've got some photographs as well. I think, but, but this is the ephemeris bit, which I've got to um, start. Ah, it's a bit, a bit tedious to keep having to do that. So, right. Now, this was at Little Langford, uh, Richard. Yeah, it's his normal spot. My, mine's the uh, chalk kiln, lime kiln. Right. So, which I can show you that if you want to see it later after we, when you finish doing this. Yes, we'll do that. Just a minute. He, he, what does he say? The wind at this time is predicted to be north, northeast, five miles per hour, gusting to 14. <laughs> I like it. It may blow the smoke over the side of the loco nearest the camera, but it's usually pulling, so it makes some smoke. One of my favourite spots. So that was going out at that time. That was, that was at noon, wasn't it? Yes, just before noon, I think. It says 12.05 on there. It was 20 past 12 in Salisbury, but it was early. Right, OK. Well, I think he's got the photograph somewhere. We'll get back to that in a minute. Um, let's go back to this one. This one is another one. This is, this is one when he did it later on. I think I can't see it signed in. Um, So this was a different bit that Wiley Road, hanging Langford over here. So it is still a little Langford, isn't it? I think so. I think it's his normal spot. He's got a spot there that he has taken me to on several occasions. So you can see it up on a bank rather than uh, 
Only see a little bit of the train. So he's standing right by the rail track there, according to that. I think you could if you wanted to. I think you could actually walk over the track at that point. That's another story. Mm. Right, okay. Right, um, that's one of those. It's on the 15th of July, this is only one day later. <laughs> According to what I see on TV on the 27th of July, by standing at the corner of Cathedral Green, the setting sun should be behind you. It was telling me to go there, you see. <laughs> the golden hour starts at 2017, and then from until 2049, it should be possible to get some well-lit shots. Did I do that? No, I didn't. <clears throat> Let's have a look at it whilst we're here. So here we are, there's the, the cathedral's just here, that bit there, and so the sun set is over here. So the sun is shining onto the cathedral, is that the right view? Should it be, or should we be standing on the other side? Yes, that's Chorister's Green, isn't it? There's some trees in the way, aren't there? Am I right? Or is that Chorister's Green? Oh, that's Chorister's Green, isn't it? Yes. Got it wrong there. Yes, um, you come in High Street, and High Street is facing north in that map. Well, this is where our shop was. This, is, this was Yes, that's right. You got it. Yeah, 89 Crane Street. <laughs> yes. Anyway, that's another matter. <laughs> um, right. Um, yeah, so I wasn't there, so that, that's another one. Um, <coughs> many, many, it says. Um, now, he's got some photographs this time, I think. Here's one. Uh, it says, photo taken at 12.15 from the first of the link shown below. Little Langford, wind at the sun was south east, so you can see the exhaust fumes from the chimney if you look closely. TPE got the sun just right, and you can see it glistening on the loco. Um, he wants this to show, but me to show it as a reasonable example. Okay, so let's have a look at it. That's what he. Can you see the fumes from the engine? It's just a bit of, not much there, is there? But it's a nicely lit photograph. Would you not agree? I haven't downloaded it. Yet. Um, I managed to 1745. They didn't tell me that. But moving on to the next one. Um, saw this site. I Robin Gritz. This is a, a chap who specializes in taking. Um, if, um, yes, I have got it. The Milky Way, adding post processing. This gift chap here. So he's got a lots of fascinating pictures. And I think this has fascinated um, uh, Terry. He talks about planning. This is using the ephemeris to do all this, all the script. There's a weather and the radar. There's the uh, aurora. Aurora, that's the Milky Way, isn't it? <coughs> and he talks about bioluminescence. Mm. So it's an interesting sight here to check out. The light pollution map. The light pollution maps. It's a link. <laughs> Drone flying. Oh, gosh. Lots to do here, isn't there? We haven't done. Neutral density Android. Neutral density filter Android application. How about that? Did you know that was existing? No. Oh, no. Does anyone neutral density filter? No. No? No. Yeah, well, you might, you might, you might, but you don't know about it. <laughs> um, it's without having to calculate it for yourself. I like it. Um, right, um, that's, that's what he said there. Um, and then, there's, what's he got here? Uh, this was the 18th of July. He is frantically working this. Um, this photograph is another one taken at 1745, fairly close to Richard's house. 
in fact, at full and drive. It's shown signing for 266 degrees. I can't get any pictures at full and drive, funnily enough. Well, let's have a look at this. This is what he took. There's a series of them here. That was one. It's all right. Um, if you unshare a second, I'll show you what mine looked like, taken from the Whiting factory. Okay. That's mine taken from the Whiting factory. I think we bought that there, Peter. Oh, yes, yes, I remember. Yes. So that's in full The only thing is, it's got no smoke and no steam. Yes. So it has, yes. Uh, you can see and also, it didn't have a nameplate on that you could read, which is rather strange. Not this red thing on the side. Yeah, but you can't read that, is what I'm saying. Normally, they have a thing across the front that says oh. Cathedral Express or whatever it happens to be. What engine is this then? Is this the Flying Scott? Or no, it's a, it's one, it's a, it's called Bermuda, and it's one of the classic. Uh, trains. It's actually called a, a well, whatever it is, classic. A 462. Yeah, yeah, 462, yeah, but it's a classic 462 and it's named Bermuda, but you wouldn't know from that that red thing because you can't read it. Yes, I seem to remember having a clockwork train that looked just like that. Ah, well, there you go. You've obviously got a classic one. Uh, yes. Right, well, you've, you've seen my efforts at it. <laughs> so that one was clockwork, which is why you couldn't see any steam. Ah, of course, I hadn't thought of that. Going back to, um, I did it. send it to the paper, but they didn't print it. So that, that's one. See, that's, that's not the same, that's, is that the same train? No, it's a different number. Steam Dreams. That was a fortnight before then, I think. But you got that, I thought it was rather clever. I think two, two, um, yes, one, one going either way, yeah. But he's must be, he must be right down the um, the, the whatever you call it, the embankment. He goes to Hang Lanford, and there's actually a, a, a cross in there that you can actually walk across the rail, so it's up to you what side you stand on, and you can walk. Well, you only have to stand by the gate to get that picture. But he's talking about Pullman Pullman Drive. Well, I don't know where he goes at Pullman Drive. I, I'd never found anywhere suitable at Pullman Drive, but there you go. Well, uh, I think that's his that's his little line for a button. Well, uh, photo, photographs, plural, taken at 1745, near Richard's house. <clears throat> 1745, that was on its return journey. They were used two cameras, one on a tripod and one with a remote release cable, and the and the other one that gives all this detail. Um, the other camera was manual. Um, I've taken them from Lightroom, where I set the white balance. He's very technical, isn't he, in this respect? Uh, in Photoshop, I have slightly adjusted the levels to by pulling their right hand slider to the left, and uh, <laughs> so on. Yes. So what else is down here? I noticed errors in the links from TPE that I've sent you. And I've gone back to some of the links to see how, how you look at the link. When hitting the link in email TPE, in email, TPE opens and you have to sign in. No red pin evident on TPE, so hit red pin. It comes up in a different place from where I was standing and where I put the pin. And render details are here. Right. Gosh. Um, and I sent him another email link there. Uh, he talked about the planning portion. Yes. And perhaps that was the email I sent him. I only scratched the surface for TPE and not done any of the instructional videos. He made me play with it. Uh, but first used it five or six years ago and not really got used to it using it properly. Yes, that's when we first looked at it, I think, wasn't it? I believe it was, but that was from Terry, that one, not you sending Terry one. This is from Terry, yes. Um, so much to learn, etc. etc. I do aim to go to the Cathedral on the 22nd at 2015 to see the, uh, maybe see you there. 
Well, he didn't see me there. He's never mentioned it since. Oh, what else has he got? Oh, um, I have subscribed to this course. Uh, it, this will be a good use of TPE. I suspect it may also need photo pills. I don't know why. Photocopies may also be possible. another possibility for practical photography. Peter, can I say, I can hear everybody else, but you are very faint. All right, I'll modify that immediately by plugging in my new system. Oh, earphones. I'm not playing yet. Just coming up to it now. Here are, look, all this. Is that any better? Is that any better? Uh, Have you swapped it over, Peter? I'll have to stop sharing to get it better. You, yeah, but you've got to go on the mute right, button microphone. and stop it. Which one is it? Well, drop the thing down at the bottom where it says Peter Reed. I think it's this one. Put the mouse down. Underneath, put the mouse down underneath Peter Reed. I can't hear anybody now. That's better. I've lost everybody now. Oh dear. I've gone to that again. <laughs> Hello. I can Hello. hear you, Speak Peter. Me. I'm hear I you. can hear you, Peter. Can you hear me, Peter? Sorry. I can hear you. I've unplugged it now because it, it, I couldn't hear you at all. Uh, but you, you need to select which one you're using where it says mute now on your screen. No, I know, I know all that. I've put it the same as system now. Oh, I see. All right. Fair enough. So it's, it's working as, as best as it can at the moment. I don't understand. I haven't got this microphone headset thing. It worked when I first plugged it in. And it worked beautifully. Now it doesn't seem to work. <laughs> ah, technology. Where are we? I was busy doing something, wasn't I? Um, Sharing, sharing. I'm sorry, um, Stan, if you can't hear me, I'll speak louder. Can you hear that at least? I can hear you. Okay, oh good. Um, no, not that one. I'm trying to get to this link here, if you can see that. I've got to leave at 11 anyway, because I'm expecting a call from my, my sister. Okay. Come on, link. There we go. Oh, this is the Christine Rose. I've already got that one open. Yes. Um, yes, we'll go to the Christine Rose one down here. There it is. Yes. Um, this is the one, the course. He said to about a course, didn't he? So we went on this course, apparently. Presumably, a oh, free training, your first Milky Way photograph. Free, free three day training with Christine Rose photography. Learn the first steps. Ah, I didn't go into this, I must admit. Let's have a look at what she says there. <coughs> so, there you are. So, if you want to take the Milky Way, just ask Christine. Well, Don't that. think you're sharing correctly again, Peter. Am I not? Um, We've still got Terry's email. Okay, well, uh, it'll be that one then, yes. Is that better? Uh, yes, probably is. It says first yeah. name and email now. Yeah, well, that's it. Well, it should say creating your first Milky Way. Yeah that's, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, it does. That's what that's what he sent. Now, I seem to have lost. Um, oh, no, I haven't really. It's just down here. Tom, I'm switching from screen to screen. You won't see that probably now. I've got to go back to new share to get back to that one. So you should have Terry's. Um, email link to that Christian thingy there. Yes, now we have. I think he's now. Uh, um, yes, yeah, so I'll talk about something rubbishy there. Right, that's that one. Any more? Uh, um, he said this is only uh, yesterday. Uh, it would be doubtful if you'd be in attendance. How we may, if you see me waiting, let me in or all that. Um, he goes out. This is a long email, and he talks about giving us a talk on astrophotography. We could cover star trails and meteorites and Milky Way and International Space Station. I was a bit dubious about that, whether you would be interested. Can I get an opinion from the group as a whole now as to whether that would be of any interest at all? 
Might be more interesting to the onward group, I suspect, Peter. Yeah, well, let's hear what other people say in this particular Of course. Um, any comments from anybody? Yeah, I'd be interested, Peter. Well, yeah, I'm right. Elaine's got a thumb up. All right, okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll persist with, with Terry's idea. Um, and he's also talking about the Perseids, Perseid meteorites next week. And the, and the Milky Way next week. And he says he's done two of those sessions with that Christian woman. Um, and the last one was last night. Uh, so, and still trying to learn all the possible things. He's talking about these photo pills, which I did mention briefly, but then he also talked about Stellarium and ISS detector and clear outside and sky view free as well as the photographer's ephemeris. So I've never heard of clear outside or sky view free. And I've got, and had a, so I had a quick examination of these things. Um, no, that's not it, oh, where did I put them? Um, I've got them open somewhere, he said. They don't seem to be here anymore, do they? Uh, perhaps, perhaps you can only have so many, only boxes open at once. But anyway, um, the clear outside was very interesting. Um, I think that was a weather weather one, really. Um, I use Skyview Free all the time, and it's really? it's an app on your phone. Yes, I know. I, I, I point it at the sky, and it tells you which star you're looking at. Yeah, I know. I've, I've had a go. I had to go this morning only. Just let me get the, a new. Bit different in the stars when the sun's out, though. You can do it in you can do it in daylight. I've had a go. You can see where they are, will be. Um, uh, will be. That's more to the point. Yeah, clear outside. This is the this international weather forecasting, and I thought this was amazing. I don't know whether you know about this, but um, this is Exeter. This is the um meteorological headquarters isn't it flo i don't know what it sounds yes like. um but you can put your own postcode in so if we put in uh, sp you're not sharing peter oh i see no, thank you not sharing again i don't know who are we sharing now go over to here you're right i wasn't right okay that's um, clear outside as it's called and i've put in my postcode and I haven't pressed the enter yet. Let's see if that works. Come on, I've pressed enter. Get forecast. I don't have to do it right. It doesn't say it is, it still says for that. There was a thing at the bottom that says got it. Do you have to press that to get the cookies cleared? Oh, yeah, I uh, got it. Yes, uh, I don't know. Let's put Salisbury in instead. Salisbury UK, yes. What, uh, oh, I found that. I think, yes, forecast for Salisbury. So here we have the waning moon. Um, and it's, this shows it to be 10 o'clock still. But at 11 o'clock, it will be 30% clouds high, and then 10% low clouds, 23% medium clouds, and 0% high clouds. And the ISS isn't passing over. The visibility is 10 miles and the fog is zero, precipitation minimal, very light rain, 10% possibility, 0 0.02 millimetres for my new, <laughs> that's a, a minute amount. <laughs> Wind direction 19 miles per hour in that direction. And so on, it's got all that logged down beautifully per hour. And then it goes on to the following day and the following day and so on. So I thought that would be quite a, a nice, we're putting in a weather forecast together. You've not seen it, and I hadn't seen it until yesterday. What do you think? What's, what's this uh, program called, Peter? Clear outside. Tells you at the top here. Oh, clear outside. Yes, you can do it for night as well. If you do, I don't know what annual darkness is. I don't know. I click on that. What happens? Annual darkness. Oh, yeah. oh, look at that. Oh yes, the old. The sunset and so on that sunrise, yes, yes, very good. I think that's good. Um, so June, July, you don't get a total night then. 
uh, more almost certain. Yes. Go back again to that. Yes, here you mean. Yes. Still, um, still light. Yes. Well, that's true, isn't it? So uh, probably. I, now, I must now. admit, if I look out my back window, I can see uh, almost any time light in the sky. But I wouldn't like to say the sun was out. But I can certainly <laughs> see light in the sky. I told you that sunrise 5.41, sunset 20.44, and here it's dark from over that period of time. Hello, somebody coming in, are they? I know, it's, it's in Richard's, Richard's front door. <laughs> right, okay, so um, I've looked at that. Oh, I, I'm back. Sharing for the moment, I can't cope with everything. Oh, so got on here. Um, yes, it's on the right side. Thing, yes. One allied thing was this stellarium that he mentioned. I don't know whether you've seen Stellarium, which is another brilliant little program for free. Here's looking west, and we can see um, that the constellations outline. Here's Auriga, and I think that. One is Orion. There is uh, what's the name? Cancer, just there. There's the sun. So if we swing round, you can see that the sun will be not quite west, not quite south. Is here. It's further than south. Isn't that interesting. This one you probably can't read it. Is called Crater. And that one's called Chorus. Chorus. Constellation Virgo, Leo, Coma Berenice, uh, and uh, so on. Whoops. Ursa Major, they're all still there. So you, you can go around, there's Ursa Minor. So the north is there, it's on the north. Um, I'm rolling them with wheel on my mouse to do that. So, so that's the shows you the constellations or not as you wish uh, this one is atmosphere that's it that's turned day into night <laughs> and this one i don't know i put landscape which we don't quite understand it removes the say goodbye i've got a my, got okay. a call from my sister okay and stan. Peter, i can hardly hear you okay stan Bye. cheerio stan cheerio stan Right, so this this um, removes the landscape. Oh no, sorry, that one removes the landscape. This one it shows you the azimuthal gr grid, namely that, whereas this one does the equatorial grid. And this one shows you deep sky objects, which I haven't figured out. Um, I probably need to have a night sky for that one. Um, so that one. Whether there are any deep sky objects, I don't know. And that says night mode. Oh yes, at night you can have it red. A bit like the thing that you have, isn't it? Sky view. What was it called, Elaine? Uh, sky view free, I think it's called. Yes, that's got a red night view as well, hasn't it? Yes, anyway, so that's the Stellarium, which is rather nice. Um, have it at a full screen like that, or not. So, oh look, you can see this, uh, something here, trailing past, Starlink. Is that, a, is that a satellite of some sort? There it is, moving across the sky, even as we speak. Some I don't think we can see it at the moment. Oh, there's another one up there. Didn't I see? Yes. Well, that's 2213. Oh, gosh. Of course, there are lots of, lots of satellites now, aren't there? There's another one. 1032. Oh, another 32 another here. <laughs> oh, God. Goodness me. And another one, like a disease, isn't it? 
You have to zoom in a little bit to get them, it seems. Not quite so easy to steer this, you might think. <clears throat> There's a whole line of satellites. Is this, is this another one? That was probably one of the ones we saw before. So, yeah, that's interesting. They disappear now, you see. You see the spot moving. Ah, that's absolutely astonishing. Oh, well, it tells you about them up there, doesn't it? So that's this one here, Cosmos 2322, also known as, you know that is? Magnitude 4.35. You would have had to see it if it was, day, if it was night. So oh, there you go. Um, I'll stop sharing. That was one of the uh, things that Terry was advocating we have a look at. Uh, and it could be useful for certain sorts of photography if we pursue his idea of looking at Milky Ways and so forth. So, right. OK. Um, Are you sending a link with that in, Peter? Yep. Well, shall do when I figured out how to do it. Yes, I think we've got to the end of, maybe not, there's another one here. I'm just let me just know, astrophotography went on about that. This email so went on a bit. Um, oh, we talked about buying, an, buying an in, uh, the inbuilt compass was a problem. So he, he bought a compass with an inclinometer. So he could take the settings from the software of compass direction and inclination on the sky and to put them onto the compass to ensure I am shooting in the right direction. <gasps> yes, I'm sure I could write a set of notes to accompany the talk. Right, he wants me to help him out on that. So that's another, the end of that email. And this next one, I said, would have given me a lot to figure out. That was last night. So this morning, uh, no. Where it up? Um, oh, I think it's the same email. I think so. uh, yes, I, I, I thought that with this practical photography might be beyond most members, and he agreed with that. Well, he says he's not sure. Um, so, shall we? Shall we go along with what he says there? I think you I think you agreed already. So it says. As a starter, the members need to be able to use their cameras in manual mode for speed, aperture, and ISO. So that's a practical thing. And I hope I'm sharing. Uh, no. 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 Ah! No. Ah! Difficult to remember where I am. Right, so go back. <laughs> this is what he said, sent only yesterday at 11.14 last night. And he thought that um, astrophotography might be beyond most members. And I'm sure he's right. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, um, he thought as a starter, you'd need to be able to use your cameras in manual mode for speed after an ISO. And of course, we've all looked at that sort of thing in the past. So you may be able to get right back to using your camera in this mode. And uh, um, uh, we can cover it again, as he said. Camera needs to be in RAW, he says. Hmm. That may not be possible for everyone. Um, anyway, that's, I think that's a little trip he's put in there. I'm sure we, I haven't read this one. We can address that by teaching an appropriate software, not necessarily Photoshop. White balance needs to be able to set this set in software as post processing or or in camera. I think you have covered this in the past. You need to be able to use a wide angle lens and be able to put the camera into manual focus, set to infinity. And you need to have a tripod, remote control, or whatever. I can split the subject into a number of discrete components. Oh gosh, we're going to have fun, aren't we? With Terry. Oh, when I put together a talk, I would wish to sit with you and go through it. Yes. All right. Well, so I'll go through with Terry later on, I think. Um, so I'll stop sharing now. Sounds like a lot of work there for me, isn't it? Right, okay, and I'm going to move on to a new topic. 
I can find my, where I am with all this lot. It is, um, it, oh, I know how to do it on here. Hi, uh, <coughs> I'm not sharing it, I know. Start sharing now. Right, so you should have a Should have a picture there. Do you see that picture of an orchid flower? Yeah. This was the um, the what was it the frog orchid? Um, the only reason I'm showing is because of this particular area down here, like a cork corkscrew. <coughs> well, that. I thought that was fascinating, <clears throat> and uh, then I thought, ah, how about trying to photograph spirals? <clears throat> Something we've never done. So I put together a little list and show of pictures here showing spirals. But <clears throat> this is the whole flower itself. It's about three foot high, pretty big. And each of the flowers has got the long bottom, bottom lip of the flower is a spiral, long extended spiral, as you can see. And it's rather shaky for photograph. Okay, so that's what that is. And there's another view of the top of the the orchid. So those, those nice spirals. And then I found um, this is a spiral, one of the tendrils. I didn't take this photograph, this is from a book, but it was a spiral in there. And uh, this was another one as well, which I didn't think much of, so I'll pass out rapidly over those. Um, oh, I, I improved the photograph, yes. Now here's some more spirals. Um, these are shells, strangely. Look a bit like ears, I thought. Then uh, that's a different color temperature one, which is right. <clears throat> and this is uh, one of these ammonites cut in half, <clears throat> polished. <coughs> um, so that's a nice spiral effect. That, um, is one. There's another one, a different thing altogether, a shell showing a spiral. And a, a snail shell, that's an ordinary snail shell. And this is a not ordinary snail shell. Uh, this is found in the sea somewhere. <coughs> then I put these two things together. These are some of Sheila's necklaces and things, whatever they are. <laughs> and I thought you could make them into a spiral to get a different sort of picture. So that was my first thoughts on that. Um, then I had a look at interest. Um, they have lots of things on spirals called Talis Arts. Um, and they, well, they've got patterns, spirals everywhere, as you can see here, <clears throat> some of which has even got an ear as a spiral. You're not screen sharing again. Oh, what again? I keep forgetting, don't I? It's a trouble. You ought to tell me more rapidly. Anyway, this is Pinterest. <clears throat> And I said, Talis Arts, as it says up there. I can't highlight it. <coughs> so he's got lots of examples of spirals here, as you can see. So I was wondering about getting you to look at spirals in various forms, even one on the thumbprint. I hadn't even thought about that one. That's a good idea, isn't it? Um, we can have a tape measure like that. Or you could spin a light, spin a light around your head, and we can look at that a bit more. Oh, why is it all funny? Oh, that's better. Um, no, I'll go back. I think that's the wrong direction. Yeah, spiral. Back to spirals. So I don't know much about Pinterest, but. Um, once you get, once you start looking at it, it keeps sending you emails about more, more effects of a similar nature. I like this one with people spiraling round. Um, <coughs> so I haven't had much uh, thought about it really, apart from uh, looking at this sort of thing. Uh, that is lager love, lager loves or something. 
I don't know what that means at all. <laughs> it's the name thought. of the person who who's submitted that photo is Lager Loves. Oh, I see. <laughs> really? Oh, you got ferns over here and uh, more shells and the like. There's another fern one here. Um, they're talking about the uh, golden rectangle here, the Fibonacci series and all that. Like, we all know about the Fibonacci, don't we? Yeah. It's a type of pasta. Well, only if you're Irish. There's another Fibonacci one there. Uh, I'm not sure that comes into spiral, but anyway, you've got the cabbage in there. What else did I find? Um, this book, yeah, uh, this one, George Hansen. Um, this is quite, quite a good site, this one. Um, if we scroll down it, it talks about- We're other... still on the Pinterest screen share, Peter. Oh, are you really? Why is that? Is that better? Yeah. Right, it's called George Hansen's uh, Photography. And you can go through this, talk something about a Mr. Mr. Nichols Spirals Pinterest page. I think that's how I got to Pinterest. Uh, but further down, it's got people like Andy Goldsworth, who I think is a British photographer, who uh, has done a lot of this sort of thing. Um, as you can see here, all these strange looking photographs. I think he may be the one that puts walks on the sand and makes um, patterns on the sand in spiral shapes, that sort of thing. Then there was a this Andy, then the person who did this site has written all this lot. But down further, there's another person called Yuval Cadman. He has some other different spirals, and then they've got these sort of spirals. <laughs> the, you know, where you swing a coloured light round on a string in the dark. You can all do that, I'm sure. Um, so there's lots of interesting versions. And just particularly, I like the, the cyanotype one. He, he goes into it quite, quite depth in the cyanotype version. He shows you all the things you need here. Um, my methods of producing it. And the poor, uh, method one, pause one. Oh, that's right. He goes through it like that. I don't know whether you've ever done cyanotypes, but um, that's certainly practical. And I know that Terry's done it. Yeah, and all you need is a few simple chemicals, one of which is ferricyanide, which is, and you could drink. It's quite um, not a problem, really. <laughs> Robert Smithson's another photographer who does spiral photography. So there's quite a lot of this sort of thing going on. There's quite a long page, this email, uh, this, this website. Circular objects. Mm, no. Can't he ventures across the whole range of things. Is that another? I see. A final evaluation. Powered by Weebly. Yeah, notice that. Right, so now I've got, if I change to another one, I'll have to change um, new share, won't I? I think, yes, I see. So this was another one that's called Ainsworth GCSE Photography. It sounds like school, doesn't it? <laughs> and of course, it's got a spiral staircase, which we haven't seen yet, so there you are. And it tells you why he chose spirals. He felt there was a lot of potential and can portray some of the other themes. So I thought I would do this topic. Then we had this new thing called a poplet, which I thought was interesting. We put, I think there must be ways of enlarging that. But I don't know how to do that. Um, I can't do that. Back to Andy Goldsworth. And there he is, um, known as a sculptor as well as a photographer. Let's see some of his works. I wouldn't think that was one of his works, would you? Oh, there's a little camera sign there, look. Not on that one, not on that one. So that means I can click on that 
and uh, it will open another screen which you probably can't see. Am I right? Am I right? Well, we've seen another page, but it's not the enlargement of the picture. Um, hmm. Which one's going to be on? All right, just a moment. Oh, it's this one, I think. Well, that's this screen. Is that right? What can you see now? Same. It's a, a web page, basically. Oh, right, that's what I'm saying. Yes, that's at the top. World Tree Christ Christian Balog or something. Yeah. Does that mean anything? Click on that. Oh, there we are. There we are. Okay. That's the World Tree, apparently. All in different languages and so on. We can look at it in more detail, I guess, if we do that. Isn't that fascinating, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's one thing he produced. Uh, getting back to square one is going to be a problem here. <laughs> I'll stop sharing for a minute. It's too complicated. There's hundreds of things open on my screen. <laughs> Which one do we go to next? Um, uh, yes, we were on the GCSE one, weren't we? Where's that got to? Oh, it has to be back on that one, I think. We'll go back to here and then try going on the back button. Oh, yes, uh, yes, this is it, yes. Yes, so I got back, got back to it. Here's another of his works. I thought that was rather nice. Um, a backlit stone of some sort, sculpt, sculptured stone. Can we assume that the homework is going to be spirals? Yes, Richard, that was my idea. Thank That's you. I'm showing you lots of spirals. <laughs> I only thought of it at five o'clock this evening, uh, last night. So, And here's this chap, Cadman again, Yuval Cadman, and there's some of his works down here. Um, they're, they're analyzing his work here. So there's a lot of um, things available. I can click on that and get to a website for it. Matthias Hacker, Hacker, whatever his name, a German photographer. Um, very young, isn't he? 1984. Um, <laughs> obviously got one of Berlin here. And I quite like that one. Whatever he did to it, it was quite interesting. And spiral staircase again, that's got a sort of broken rail for some reason. Quite odd somewhere. And he talks about planning the shoot. For, ex for my example of Goldsworth work, I plan on recreating the one where the leaves are spread in a spiral shape. For this, I'm not only going to use leaves, but also plan to using things like rocks and pebbles and flowers. And this is amazing, this website. So there he is with his with the start of his work. Now they look exactly the same to me. They may not be, but they look the same. And then another three, where he's got a, a, um, a cactus in the middle of it. And then another one with a cactus, but the stones are moved a bit. And then without a cactus, different versions of that, and different versions. But it goes on with these different versions like this, with just leaves. Um, and then he says, he analyzes his own work saying, this is my worst image. And he says why he thinks it's the worst image. Then he goes on to what he thinks is his best image. <laughs> Doesn't look very good to me, but uh, anyway, you can't have everything. And then another shoot, plan two, um, following the work of Andy Goldsworthy, I'm showing a spiral with, within using nation, nature. I'll show this by taking pictures of the inside of a rose so you can see the spirals hiding inside. I know this is basic, but I plan to do more complex shoots in time coming. Right, so there's his rose. So we've got three of that one, three of that one. Three. It's like typography again, isn't it, um, uh, Elaine? Are you listening, Elaine? Oh, it's you're muted, I expect. I'm just muted because I keep coughing. <laughs> I see. But anyway, I'm As you've noticed, right. I've got a bent thumb. So when I say yes, it's always bent over. <laughs> so it is, yes. <laughs> so we did all these roses and roses. Look at them. Incredible bothering to put all this on. And then he says his worst image is that one. Um, the depth of field is too big. Uh, and the image is out of focus. Don't quite understand that. 
typing out it too big. Um, so anyway, he says that's his, this is his best one. And that's because of medium depth of field he's got on that one. Oh, and I've got another one here on these. This is what gave me the idea of showing you some of the um, necklaces of Sheila's. But he's got some metal ones here. You know, you, uh, Richard, you had these um, uh, magnetic ball things that linked together that you can make spirals out of. You're muted, Richard. Yes, I do remember. Do you oh. want me to make a spiral out of the balls? Yeah, why not? Some point. Okay, not a problem. No, I thought it would be easy. <laughs> well, I, I found that Sheila's got some magnet magnetized um, things a bit like uh, a bit like the uh, a bit like these, but they join together, linked together across. I can't see the point of it really, but um, maybe these are magnetized. I don't know. They're very weakly magnetized by comparison with those those ball, those little ball bearing ones. Anyway, as you see, lots of typology again. Another one. Then he goes on to yet another one. This one is uh, different size shells to create a spiral shape. And so he does look. <laughs> Extraordinary. An extraordinary website. And the worst one is that one, which is all right. And then his best one is that one, which is yeah, that's pretty good. And another one. Oh, I've forgotten about this. Oh, this, <laughs> this is using chocolates. Mm. This is more up my line, I think. <laughs> so here they are all encased. And then... Uh, He's trying out his best to put these chocolates down. Close ups. <laughs> and his worst one is that the one. A nice swirl on those. Sorry? The this nice one. swirl on those, the one above. Not like these, you mean? No, slightly further up, it's sharp on the one above. Yeah. This one? one here you've gone mute the again. middle one this one oh. yes well that one yeah okay right well, we'll move on that, that's what he considered his best one as well how about that i think that must be that's got another one this one's using a bath bomb to make spirals in water i know this is hard but i think i can do it i will use different depths of fields to show how it looks different when close and not so close. So I don't know what I don't know what a bath bomb is, but here it is. I presume it's got some salts in it which does uh, produce bubbles and things. So here's his pictures of this. Um, <laughs> quite, a, quite a funny room. Uh, so there we are. And then his worst image was that one. I don't like this because I don't have the spiral shape like the other shoots do. In addition, this image is quite plain and doesn't look as good as some of the others. Uh, That's the, the one image... above the one you're looking at now, I think, Peter. Yes, the this image completely failed. This is what he's saying. So then he goes to his best image down here, you see, which has got a, which has got a good spiral. So he must have swirled the water. So then he got... Uh, so oh. here we are. There's all sorts of bits more, and it goes on. Oh, yeah. it goes on a bit. This website. So, <clears throat> I think that's all of the um, all of the information I'm going to give you on that, <laughs> which I'm sure is far more than you need. <laughs> you all know all about spirals already. You've probably got photographs of spirals already too. Um, I'm sure I have too, but I haven't. I haven't managed to dig them out yet. Um, so. Uh, does that sound of interest, that sort of project? Sounds better than the one from last week, last month. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. That's very kind of you to say. Alan's got a, a, a sort of, what's the word? <laughs> it's not awesome. a bent thumb, though, Elaine. <laughs> <laughs> Anne, how, what do you think of this spiral yes, idea? I, yes, I think I can manage those. Excellent. And Peter, do you think you could manage that? I think I can manage that, Peter. <laughs> well, I, I might give Stan's reply. I, I don't do homework. Yeah, well, 
why not to do it this time? Fit I'll it in between it. now and four weeks' time. I'll change it and say, I do do homework. <laughs> yes, of course you do. Yes. Well, not, it's it's not homework, it's a fun, lovely project. Uh, exactly. but, uh, you're right, you're right. And it'll it. get me out of a lot of the jobs that Maureen wants me to do. <laughs> there you are. That's one reason for doing it. <laughs> I have to tell Stan that. Obviously, he leaves his wife, Jean, to do everything. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised either. Um, right. OK, oh, well, I'm going to stop at this point. I hope that's um, given you some ideas um, and, um, and I shall hopefully send you a video of all of that so you can catch up when you've forgotten what, what I've said about Stellarium and all these other sky view thing. I've got that on my, I'll put that on my mobile phone. Uh, I've um, forgotten that, if I can get it to work. Uh, where have I got it now? Oh, come on. Show yeah, me. I was playing with Skyview Free while you were giving your talk, and it tells me that if I point it up at the light bulb in my lounge, I'm looking at Mercury. Yes. <laughs> that was the point, isn't it? Um, where have I got it on here? I'm just loaded. The one it. I will say to people that when you first go into Skyview Free, it has this rather yeah, 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 yes, strange did, noise it? in the background, but you can switch the noise off. Oh, there it is. There it is. I don't know whether you can see that. But Does it not matter where you sit in the room as to whether you're looking at Mercury or not? Or is Mercury the centre of the universe? No, no, no. Where you sit and you point and it tells you that if it was dark and if you could see the stars, that's what's there. Yes, yeah, so, so that's where it would be. Well, that constellation there, which is, um, uh, what is it, the constellation of Virgo, I suppose. Can't quite see. Doesn't, doesn't label it. But, uh, it's it does lay if if when when you get the the central thing right over one star, it brings up the name and the constellation in words on the bottom left hand corner. Oh, it's showing here the I can't point to turn it around because there's the planets there of Jupiter and Mars. Yeah, and, and Mercury is a bit further up. It's <laughs> yes. So it's only I tell you, it blows your brain when you're in the Antarctic. And have we got any of our Canberra friends with us today? No, <laughs> no. But it, it blows your brain because you've then got to think which way is north. <laughs> that way. It's all about that. <laughs> what are you going to say, Richard? Well, no, I'm, always, I'm just saying north is that way, whatever you do. Even in <laughs> Australia, <laughs> it's that way. <laughs> the, the, if, you turn the, if you turn the phone the wrong way around, it kind of... It messes with your brain. I'll put it that way. Yes, I wouldn't. I uh, wouldn't argue that point. <laughs> well, I can say that you're southwest from here. <laughs> I, can, I can see you all on this thing, but uh, I can't. Well, there are stars over the top. Yes, I can't see any satellites moving now. Does it show satellites as well? I don't, I don't just. Yeah, it does. Oh, it does. Right. Yeah. You've got to zoom in a bit more for the satellites, I think, Peter. Oh well, you have well, to. It only shows the space station. It says and it shows, and it shows actually, um, it shows Father Christmas in the month before Christmas, because ah. you all know that Father Christmas is going round the world, and you can use Skyview Free to see where Father Christmas has got to, and whether you've been a good girl, and whether he's missed you. Well, it had one bit where I think you paid a little bit of money to get the constellations named and so on. Is that right? I don't pay for anything. No, mine comes up free. All right. Well, that's all I've got at the moment. Right. Okay. Play with this. You go into the settings and you can set it what you want yes. and definitely switch off the whizzy music. And you don't have to have GPS. No, or you don't. Wi-Fi. No. And that's why it works in Antarctica. Yes, good point. And also in Churchill when you go to the polar bears. It would probably work on Martin Down as well. Possibly, Probably yeah. Know where that is. <laughs> right, okay. Well, yeah, I do know where Churchill is, even if... Uh... <laughs> Well, I didn't think I did. I've been there many times. <laughs> Great, isn't it? Yes. Did you go on the train? Uh, no, because I flew there and we were testing aircraft at minus 40 in the winter. Oh, right. And it's definitely a bit woolly at minus 40. Yeah. But it, I have got some pictures of me playing football at minus 40 in just shorts. <laughs> <laughs> One ball it, doesn't every day like, it doesn't feel that cold, partly because there's a... It's very, very dry. Yeah. Yeah.
Right, come on, I'm starting to close this. Okay, on the thought of your knobbly knees at minus 40, we'll say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. I want a cup of coffee. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.